In the next few videos, we're going to go over the reproductive system. This video is going to start by discussing the reproductive structures and their functions. So in a lot of these videos on the reproductive systems, we're going to be talking about the male reproductive system and the female reproductive systems. It's important for the MCAT to know about their similarities and differences, as well as how they interact. So to start with, we're going to discuss the gonads. The gonads are reproductive glands that produce gametes as well as sex hormones. In males, the gonads are called the testes or testicles, and they're responsible for producing sperm and secreting testosterone. Now, notably, the gametes, which are the sex cells for producing new organisms, are both haploid, sperm and egg cells. In females, the gonads are called the ovaries. They produce egg cells, and they also secrete estrogen and progesterone. Now, one thing to note here is, my description of testes and ovaries here is quite simplified. In reality, there are many other compounds being secreted by the testes as well as the ovaries, but these are the important ones that you need to know for the MCAT. In medical school, you'll learn a lot more details about what else the testes and ovaries secrete. All right, so next, let's talk about genitalia. We'll start off with males, and for both males and females, we'll be able to discuss both internal genitalia and external genitalia. In general, for males, they have more external genitalia than females. So for the internal genitalia, we have the testes. These are stored inside the scrotum, and they're important for producing sperm. We also have the epididymis. The epididymis is a structure that is attached to the testes, and this structure is for sperm maturation and storage. When sperm is first produced, it is in an immature form that is not capable of moving and also not capable of impregnating a female. So it has to undergo a maturation process to form mature sperm, and this is also the structure where the sperm are stored prior to ejaculation. The next structure is the vas deferens. The vas deferens is simply a tube that connects the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. Through the ejaculatory duct, the sperm will enter the urethra. So one thing to note with males is that the pathway that the sperm moves is shared with the urinary tract. So there is a shared path with the urinary tract. Okay, and the last internal structure are the accessory glands. There are multiple accessory glands, the bulbourethral gland, the prostate gland, and the seminal vesicles. Their function is to produce seminal fluid. So during ejaculation, the ejaculate is not pure sperm. Much of it is actually a fluid that is alkaline to deal with the acidic fluids in the vagina and also contains nutrients like fructose to help uh, keep the sperm alive. Okay, so these are the internal male genitalia. We can now look at the external male genitalia. This includes the penis and the scrotum. The penis, of course, is important for sexual function and for delivering sperm within females. We also have the scrotum. The scrotum stores and protects the testes. It also has an important function in temperature regulation. As you might recall, the production of sperm has to occur at a temperature slightly lower than body temperature. So when the body gets too hot, the scrotum will actually relax and drop lower from the body. And when it is cold, the scrotum will rise, bring the testes closer to the body. So that's for males. Now we can talk about females. For females, the first thing I want to note is that the female's sexual organs are distinct from the urinary tract. So that means the path that egg cells follow and eventually the birth of the baby, it is distinct from the urinary tract. So with females, the internal structures, you have the vagina, this is the birth canal. 
you have the uterus. So the vagina is connected to the uterus. The uterus is the major structure within females, which is ultimately going to house and nurture the developing fetus. Sometimes you also hear about another term between the vagina and the uterus, and that is the cervix. Now, the cervix is not a distinct structure from the vagina and the uterus. The cervix is actually the lower part of the uterus. But in terms of the path that sperm moves in order for fertilization to occur, it's often described as vagina to cervix to uterus and then to the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes, there are two of them, they connect the uterus to the ovaries and the ovaries is where egg cells are produced. And during the monthly cycles, the menstrual cycle, follicles are released into the fallopian tubes and the sperm need to find their way to the fallopian tubes for fertilization to occur. So the fallopian tubes is important because it's the site of fertilization. For the external structures, you have the labia majora and the labia minora. These are the lips of the vagina and they provide protection. You have the clitoris, which is important for sexual pleasure. The greater vestibular gland, which provides lubrication. And you also have the vagina opening, which of course is important in order for sexual functioning to occur. Okay. So these are the different structures that you need to know for the MCAT. It would be helpful to, of course, take a look at a diagram at some point. So that way you can uh, take note of how these structures are positioned relative to each other.